effort. And this next photograph that I'm looking at are about to be rescued after splashdown on Gemini 6A. They claim to have made a space rendezvous with Borman and Lovell flying Gemini 7. From the front of the capsule, we see the base of a long fiberglass whip antenna. It is completely undamaged, and it is not retractable as the capsule cabin contains no antenna well. The capsules came from the factory gleaming with a silver film. This is charred by temperatures over 5,000 degrees during re-entry. Anything not shielded by the forward ablative coating will burn up. None of the other Gemini capsules, capsules showed whip antennas after splashdown. Now, this antenna responds to frequencies not used in space and would only be of value in locating the capsule after it landed. Once the capsule was found, it would have no further value. Why do NASA apologists argue that the rescue divers installed this antenna after it was in the water? The only conclusion left is that this capsule never re-entered from space, but was parachuted from a cargo plane. On the cover of this book, folks,